Hello there everybody and welcome back to the new and hopefully improved Daltarity. Yes, that's right everybody, Dolph Oddity has returned and everything is new. New big glowy logo, and new cave wall, and new workspace, and new shells, and not new me, I'm still just Dalton, but new everything else. It's like we're in the Dalto cave. But anyway, yes, we are back and we are starting off with a little bit of magic. Now, I'm sure it comes as no surprise that I love all things magical, whether it's Harry Potter or Wizards of Waverly Place or the Fairly Odd Parents or my most recent obsession, The Magicians. I could use magic. Great show, you should definitely check it out. And as much as a fan I am of all of their crazy hand magic stuff, uh, the one thing The Magicians don't have that I absolutely love is Wands. Yes, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own magic wand. Back in my younger years, I made quite a few of those hot glue and wooden stick ones. And back in middle school, I even whittled this puppy out of a chunk of wood because what else was I supposed to do? And I even have this one here from Ollivander's Wand Shop. It picked me. But the one thing I did not have was a wand that really felt like it was my own that it really incorporated all the magical things that I personally enjoyed, so that is what I did. I made one. I basically mashed all of my favorite magical things together and came up with this guy. It's the magic wand you saw in the brand new intro that we created, and guess what? It lights up. Though I'm not entirely sure you can see it with these bright lights, it does in fact glow blue. See, if I blink it, you can kind of see it. The biggest inspiration for this wand is definitely this giant Crystal Dolph Oddity logo we have. Guess you could call it some doll tonight. Again, probably not. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't have a name. I was just looking at it and I was like, wow, I really wish I could use the powers that that giant crystal has. So I made something to help me do so and I'm going to show you how to do the very same thing. I made this wand using two thermoplastics, Warbler's Black Art and their Transparent Art, which is the same thing used for this crystal behind me. To make it glow, which is completely optional of course, I use some electroluminescent wire. This stuff can be bought super cheap on Amazon, I think I got this spool for like 2 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get the exact same one. You can get it in all sorts of really fun colors, and the really cool thing about it is you can actually cut it to any length you want and it will continue to glow. Now to start, the first thing I did was figure out how long I wanted the wand to be. I decided about 14 inches was right for me. You can make yours as short or as long as you want though. I then multiplied this length by two, which is 28 inches, and cut out this length in the electroluminescent wire because I decided since I had so much, it'd be really great if I could just fold it back on itself and have even more light inside the wand. So now that I have the wire cut to the appropriate length, it is now time to move on to working with the thermoplastic. Quick note, you need to be very careful working with this stuff. You are going to be heating it up to very high temperatures and you do not want to burn yourself. So to maintain some safety, the things I recommend doing is wearing some latex gloves. I just double mine up. You can also use some heat resistance gloves with some latex gloves on top of that. When working with the transparent art specifically, I like to use a piece of wooden board with some water on top of that. This stuff heats up at a much higher temperature than other thermoplastics the transparent art also sticks to wax paper or parchment paper and aluminum foil unlike other thermoplastics. So using the wood covered in water, make sure that it won't be sticking to your work surface. It is also a good idea to keep your gloves covered with water just to make sure it doesn't stick to you either because that is definitely not too fun at all. All right, so now I cut out some about one inch strips of the transparent warbler. I cut out enough of these strips to cover the entire 28 inches of the L wire. I placed the strips down on the wetted board and begin heating them up with my heat gun. I heat them up until I start seeing bubbles form underneath the plastic and then I place the wire on top of it and fold the plastic over. It is going to cool down almost immediately so you're not going to be able to do much work outside of that without heating it up again. I do this all the way down the wire so that it is just encapsulated now inside of the plastic. Be careful when doing this that you do not get the exposed tip of the L wire wet as it will cause it to short circuit. However, if this does happen, do not panic. Just allow some time for it to dry out completely 
and the wire should begin to work once more. All right, so now that the entire wire is covered, I go ahead and heat the whole thing up again and fold it directly in half. Now it is time to start shaping the actual wand. Starting from the tip where I have bent the wire in half, I heat it up slowly and start twisting the two pieces together, forming the shape of the wand. I sort of mold it all together into one mass, twisting as I go so that the wires will be twisted around and it will disperse the light more evenly within the wand. I do this going down the entire wand, giving it some interesting bumps and curves as I go. Be careful not to overheat during this step as you do not want to ruin the electrical wire inside of the wand. Do this down the entire wand until you just have the black bit hanging out down at the end. Like I said, you can keep it looking just like this, but I wanted to add a more interesting handle. So I then took the black warbler, and for those of you that have been around Dog Totally for a while, you'll probably remember this stuff from our Poseidon's Trident tutorial. We covered the entire thing with it. This stuff has a much lower melting temperature, so you don't have to worry as much about getting burned, and you also don't necessarily have to use the board, but I like to use it just as a nice work surface. This stuff is super great. You can melt it and mold it into any shape you want. That is exactly what we are going to be using it for in this tutorial. I cut out some very small triangular shaped strips, heat them up, and then roll them into little snakes, skinnier at one side and thicker at the other. I then lay these onto the wand, twisting them down the side. I keep the black bit spare wherever it is starting to meet the crystal part of the wand and more dense around the area where you will actually be holding it. I do, however, leave some exposed crystal bits in the handle portion because I do want some of the glowing to sort of sneak through there as well. You can do as many or as little as you like, but once you're done, go ahead and heat the whole thing up and then lightly hold it in your hand. You don't want to burn yourself, but you just want to sort of leave the intention of how your hand will be holding it and it'll make a nice handle for you to grab onto. I then heat things back up one last time and use a metal loop tool, which is usually used for sculpting clay and things like that and just sort of blend down any pieces that are very obviously separate. And once I did that, my wand was done. Now, if you want, you could go in and you could add some paints to the handle bit or anywhere else, but I sort of like just the black look along with the crystal wand. If you added the L wire in like I did, you will have this battery pack sort of dangling out of the bottom like this. The good thing though is it usually has a little connector that you can separate like so, and then you can fold up a smaller bit of wire in your hand and use it whenever you're wearing like short sleeves or anything like this the wand won't be able to glow but then you can still just hide the little extra wire and it is super easy to hide this battery pack in any sort of sleeve you can sort of just strap it onto your forearm like this and then you still have full motion and all the wire is covered by your sleeve which is exactly what I did in the intro for this video so here is the complete wand. When I hold it over here, you can really see that blue glowing action. When you hold it here, you can really tell that it's very similar to this crystal here. All right, that is all that we have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, make sure you like this video and leave a comment. And if you are not already, but you would like to, you can go ahead and subscribe and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button, and you will be notified every single time that we make a new video just like this one. Like I said, Dothodity is back. We are new, and we are creating lots of cool stuff for you guys. So make sure you stick around, because we do have some new stuff coming out very soon that you do not want to miss. All right, that's pretty much all we got for you. So thanks for watching and we'll see you real soon. Magic.